those eyes which have choroid and iris coloboma they frequently have two common problems one is a premature formation of cataract and second is retinal detachment these eyes are also made difficult by the patient because patient fearing the surgery and not only because the fear is just a routine fear but there is a fear regarding getting complications during the surgery in the eye which has a limited vision and frequently these patients also have asymmetrical presentation that is one of the eye is is worse so this is one patient in which we had bilateral iris choroid coloboma and this is the anterior segment of the right eye and the fundus photograph of the same eye and we can appreciate that the disc and the macula is spared and so this eye had some amount of vision and this is the better eye in which patient was able to see much better and as per the old record the patient had vision of 618 earlier and this is the fundus photograph of the same patient and we can see the coloboma is far away from the macular area so the patient surgery was planned for removal of cataractous lens and phaco emulsification with a foldable monofocal eye oval was planned and because the patient had a corneal astigmatism of 4.5 diopters so opposite clear corneal incision 2 was planned toric eye oval in these eyes is a very challenging task and very unpredictable because these eyes have a very small capsular bag in which the eye oval may not remain stabilized and because of the warping caused by the small capsular bag the eye oval rotation is inevitable so a corneal incision has been play made and we are injecting viscoelastic to inflate the anterior chamber and this patient the eye was a little easier to operate compared to a eye where there is a lens coloboma also because these eyes may also have a inferior lens coloboma corresponding to the site of iris coloboma and whenever you have lens coloboma it poses challenge because the vitreous may prolapse into the anterior chamber through that coloboma and then that vitreous prolapse is going to increase the stress to the surrounding zonules and will always cause a vitreous prolapse which will be progressive during the surgery however in this case we didn't have this complication so i was anticipating a trouble free surgery although a bit difficult because of a small anterior chamber and a shallow ac which is frequently a finding in these eyes so we are removing the overlying cortex after performing the capsular excess going for a direct horizontal chop the nucleus has been successfully chopped in two and as we can appreciate the hydro dissection was not very adequate so the nuclear rotation is little tricky but it has been done and so progressively chopping the lens and making smaller fragments i would like to add that instead of chopping to four pieces it is always better to chop it into several more maybe six maybe eight and that will always be better for your cornea because a smaller piece which has been chopped into a smaller fragment will always be easier to emulsify without protruding too much into the anterior chamber and that will prevent inadvertent rubbing of that nuclear chunk onto the endothelium and this will be better because next day the cornea will be much more happier so here we are we have nearly chopped half of the nucleus and again fragmenting the nucleus into smaller chunks and emulsifying it at the pupillary plane removing the epineucleus now and till now the surgery has been comfortable enough and predictable so now proceeding for removal of the cortex matter here i would like to say that these capsules are weak somehow because of this congenital inherent issue so one has to be very very careful not only because of the fragility of the capsule but also deficiency of the zonules at the inferior part and one never wants vitreous to be prolapsed in these cases 
because then implantation of the eye well becomes very tricky very difficult because these eyes are not suitable for anterior chamber eye well placement because of shallow ac uh, unpredictable size and possibility of corneal touch so one has to be extra careful when compared to a normal feco so this portion of the video is running at 1.5 times the speed and nearly whole of the cortex has been removed i am moving up to the sub incisional part and this is the tricky part where i had a confusion regarding possibility of a posterior capsular tear when i saw these two straight converging lines and fearing that there is a capsular tear i stopped my aspiration kept the infusion on and i filled the anterior chamber with viscoelastic so as not to allow the vitreous to prolapse out here i am over filling the chamber which i regretted later on and we will see again what went wrong so once i was aspirating this sub incisional cortex i could see two converging lines forming on the posterior capsule and some point it appeared that there is a puncture or rupture of this capsule and these two converging lines are actually representation of a pc tear which are converging up to the point where the coloboma meets so the first thing to be done in such a situation is not to withdraw the irrigation aspiration probe but rather keep the irrigation on and fill the chamber with viscoelastic here as i was telling you that i later on regret, regretted over filling this chamber because now we have a iris prolapse because of the increased anterior chamber pressure and here i will show you how to reposit these situations the minded that the wound is not incompetent but rather a chamber being shallow and iris being in proximity with a positive intraocular pressure this iris is being pushed out so first thing to be done is burp the anterior chamber that is release the pressure inside and this can be done by pressing over the posterior lip along with the iris once the anterior chamber pressure has been released then simply push in more viscoelastic over and above the iris surface and it will simply unfold and go back into the anterior chamber and now confirming that there is no pct here i am proceeding with removal of the cortical matter which is adherent so not only that it is adherent but now we can see the pupil has become little smaller so i planned a different strategy and i proceeded for implantation of a pcil the plan was to remove this cortical matter later on and we will see how we will remove this cortex again because of the positive pressure the iris has prolapsed out but right now my priority is not repositing it but rather to get the iol inside the bag so burping out the little amount of intraocular pressure by burping out the viscoelastic and dialing this iol into the bag so this method of deforming the trailing haptic also works when you don't want to rotate the whole iol for various reasons and now proceeding for the opposite clear corneal incision which was planned to neutralize the astigmatism of 4.5 diopters although this will just take care of something like one diopter and combined with the superior incision it will have a effect of something like 1.5 to 2 diopters now the plan was to reuse this port to remove the remaining cortex and as i proceeded i could see that there was iris prolapse so before repositing this i found that this is a opportunity for me to visualize the cortex which was hidden behind the iris which was getting smaller and i could reuse the prolapse as a way of exposing that cortex so it worked for me and once the cortex has been removed the iris is very smoothly and gently reposited back 
so any blunt instrument if it is used properly that is first of all burping or removing the material viscous or fluid from the anterior chamber and then pushing the iris back broader the instrument tip better it is because then it will not damage the iris so patient at this time start had having some amount of blepharospasm disturbance but after some persuasion he was able to maintain proper gaze and as you can see the surgery has been successfully completed the iol has been placed in the bag and the anterior chamber is being inflated at this time we can also appreciate that there is no iris prolapse which indicates that the wound construction was good enough and it was just the fluid flow and proximity of the iris which is causing the iris prolapse so the case is finished now and now we proceed to see the first post op day image and we can appreciate the cornea is exceptionally clear we can also appreciate there is an inferior clear corneal incision which may result into some amount of opacity but still the central area of the cornea is clear and i hope that this will take care of some amount of astigmatism also which will result into a lesser amount of cylinder power required thank you